Zebra by Jeff Murimi. When I went to the jungle, I saw a buffalo with different colors like pink, blue, and red. The buffalo was pushing a wheelbarrow. The tire came out and the buffalo fell down. It was singing. Kweli Musa Uli Poniowa Surayangu Haikuana Lama Truly Moses, why you marry me? My face had no scars. And then he turned to the jungle feeling very happy. After a while, the buffalo got very tired. He decided to have a little nap. It fell asleep in mud and became very dirty. I saw a snake. It loved eating meat. When the snake opened its mouth, the zebra who was playing football kicked the ball. It went straight to the mouth of the snake. The snake swallowed the ball and turned into a harmless creature, letting the buffalo and zebra live in peace and harmony. This story was brought to you by Rainbow Tales Kenya. My name is Innocent Mubo. Fashion Show by Michelle Nikita. It was one Friday morning when I woke up feeling very excited because I was going to visit the jungle. When we arrived there, I saw a lion, giraffe, gazelle, and an elephant doing a fashion show. The lion was wearing a dress and the giraffe, a pair of trousers and a shirt. The gazelle was wearing a pair of short trousers while the elephant wore a skirt and a blouse. The lion, giraffe, and the elephant walked in the audience while the other animals cheered and applauded. When the show was over, the hyena, who was the judge, stood up and said that he would be the one to announce the winner. The gazelle, lion, giraffe, and elephant started again saying, I am the winner. The hyena insisted that he was the one to decide. Suddenly, a monkey arrived and said that he would be the one to make the final judgment because he was more clever than the hyena. All the animals agreed that the decision was to be made by the monkey. The gazelle was announced to be the winner. It was very happy where others, others were very sad because they had lost. The gazelle was given a pair of shoes. When they closed the shoe, the gazelle went back home very excited wearing his new shoes. This story was brought to you by Rainbow Tales Kenya. My name is Wendy Nyawira. The Magic Rainbow by Faith Karagi. In my fantasy jungle, I saw us as very tiny people. The animals from the jungle were our best friend. We were not like the other people. We were as short and tiny as ants. The lion was the same, so there was no reason for us to be enemies. One day, 
we also are rainbow brightly colored with different colors. We like the big, beautiful and brightly colored rainbow and try to climb it. Before all of us were white in color but after we climbed it, we were of different colors and became big and began to play different instruments. We were glad to become big and happy that our friendship had not ended there. We were also to see that the big, beautiful and brightly colored rainbow did not go away. If you were a green lion playing a drum and you climb the rainbow, you will change it to any color you like and begin to play any instrument you like. The trees began to love me and poured flowers to my bed during night time. They made a rope for me to play during daytime. But one day, all the animals and trees disappeared. It made me very sad to recognize that all my friends were gone for good. This story is brought to you by Rainbow Tales Kenya. My name is Nehemia Osoro. Ikua and the Giant by Natasha Adufka Once in a village, they lived a young man called Ikua. He was a poor man and all the villagers knew him. He had two children and one wife. They lived in a small house near the river. One day, Ikua went to hunt for food in the forest. He heard a noise from an oak tree. He went behind the leaves and peeped. He saw a giant breaking trees. Ikua fixed an arrow to his bow and aimed at the giant. It fell down in pain. Ikua went near it and spoke to it. Please don't hurt me, the giant pled. Ikua felt sorry for what he had done. The giant promised Ikua that if he removed the arrow, he would become rich. Soon it was getting dark and Ikua's wife was getting worried. Ikua walked a long distance with the giant to see a big house with a beautiful garden that the giant wanted to give him. The giant also gave him two golden coins. Ikua could not believe his eyes. Finally, Ikua asked the giant for a way back home. The giant gave him good instructions and Ikua arrived home safely. He told his wife what had happened. She became very happy. When Ikua went to sleep, he put the golden coins on top of the bedroom table. When he woke up, he found a lot of money on the table. He went to the nearby market and bought new things. From that day on, he started living a comfortable life. Since Ikua was not selfish, he called all the villagers and told them about the giant. Later, Ikua led the villagers to the forest where they crowned the giant the king. They all migrated to the magic house, which turned into a palace. Ikua became the head chief of all the people in the palace. His wife became a businesswoman and their children were studying in the palace. When the giant grew old and died, Ikua became the king and the magic continued. Nighttime, Ikua used to look up in the sky where a bright light beamed into his eyes. He came to know that it was the giant spirit looking after him and his people. They lived happily ever after. This story was brought to you by Rain Tales Kenya. My name is Faith Karagi. and the cat by Owen Gary. Once upon a time, there lived a cat and a dog. They were good friends who shared everything they had. One day, the cat told the dog to take care of the kittens while she was gone. The dog promised the cat to take good care of them. The dog told the puppies to go and play with the kittens. 
While they were playing in the snow, one of the puppies got very angry because a kitten had found a 200 shilling note on the ground. The puppy started a fight. Give me that money, you scamper, he said. I'm not going to give it to you, said the kitty. The puppy pushed the kitty with his mighty hands and the kitty fell down from a rock. It was a long fall down. The kitty fell on a sharp stone and died. The dog called his puppies and ran away for good. When the cat came from the market, she found that one of the kittens was missing. The other kittens told their mother that the puppy had thrown him down the rock and he died. The cat went to the dog's house and found a note saying that I have gone far, far away with my puppies and will never ever return again. The cat got very angry and her eyes turned red. She pledged that when she finds the dog, she will chop his head off and throw it in a volcano. She laughed horribly. That is why a cat and a dog never get on well and become friends. Every time they see each other, they start fighting. And as the Englishman said, revenge is a must. This story was brought to you by Remba Tales Kenya. And my name is Natasha Kadufka. The Wagtail Tie by Marita Rainbow. Larry the Lizard lived under the porch of a summer cottage. The owners spent their weekends there, but otherwise Larry was able to stay in glorious solitude by the lakeside. Larry was happy with his life. He had plenty to do without any neighbors to bother him. One sunny summer's day. Larry was admiring the bees on their nectar flights to a rose bush when he heard the wobbling of a wagtail from the fence. The mother bird stared tirelessly at a pile of food stored under the porch. Chopping and chipping loudly, Larry's curiosity was aroused. He darted around the porch, sneaking looks at the pile of food under the porch through the gaps in the flooring. Goodness gracious! What did he see? Four fuzzy wuzzy small hatchling birds sleeping in a small nest on the top of the wood pile. Larry's peace and quiet was gone. Day after day, he watched the antiques of the wagtail family. Jealously, he saw the baby birds grow under their mother's care. They seemed to be always hungry, with their orange-colored mouth gaping open. The young birds waited for the treats their mother would bring to them one nest. Snuggling close to their brothers and sisters, they were truly enjoying the dog days of their first summer. Larry's curiosity knew no bounds. He spent his days watching the Wattel family, not pausing to eat or drink. The young birds had now left their nest and basked in the sun on the wood pile. Their large eyes observed keenly the world around them. Larry had spent the whole summer a week on the porch. Nature carried on with its own life. The bilberries ripened and the wild strawberries shone bright red. One night, Larry could not keep his eyes open any longer. Exhausted, he fell into a deep sleep. The morning greeted Larry with a shocking sight. The pile of wood under the porch was completely deserted. Even the chopping mother wagtail had fallen silent. Suddenly, Larry's life seemed empty and without purpose. The wagtails had flown from their nest to continue their life somewhere else. But what about Larry's own life? The moral of the tale is live and let live. This story was brought to you by Rainbird Tales. And I am Alphonse Wama. Yeah. Rain battles.
Yeah.